Hello and welcome to Bounty in the Comics. My name is John Trent. I'm the founder and editor in chief at Bounty in the Comics. Today, I got a story about the Disney sycophants at the rewriting Ripley podcast maligning conservatives and a number of YouTubers to deflect blame from Kathleen Kennedy's failures with the Disney Star Wars sequel trilogy. A failure that is clear for anyone to see. If you just look at the box office numbers, the three Disney sequel trilogy films rapidly declined in box office hall. As reported by the numbers, The Force Awakens grossed $2.065 billion at the global box office. $936.6 million was from North American theaters. It grossed $191 million in domestic video sales. The Last Jedi only grossed $1.332 billion at the worldwide box office. Only $620.1 million came from theaters in North America, and it only grossed $100.9 million in domestic video sales. The Rise of Skywalker grossed $1.072 billion at the worldwide box office, with only $515.2 million from theaters in North America. It grossed only $66.5 million in domestic video sales. The decline from The Force Awakens to The Rise of Skywalker is significant. The gross at the global box office declined by 48%. In North America, it declined by 45%. Domestic video sales declined by 65%. On top of that, Disney even admitted their Star Wars merchandise sales were in decline. In their 2019 quarter three financial report, Disney stated, the increase at our consumer products business was due to growth at our merchandise licensing and retail businesses. Growth at merchandise licensing was primarily due to higher revenue from merchandise based on Toy Story, partially offset by a decrease from Star Wars merchandise. That's right, it reads a decrease from Star Wars merchandise. On that note, Chuck Tercera, the Diamond Select Toys president, detailed there wasn't demand for sequel trilogy products. He explained, We just as of yet have not seen enough fans that would want to buy a bust, have that personal affection for some of these new for some of those new characters that make sense to justify going to production. But for sure we're watching it, and perhaps as more time passes, fans' affection for those characters will grow. Despite all of these factors, the Disney sycophants at the rewriting Ripley podcast believe the reason Star Wars is in the absolute garbage state that it currently is in is because of conservatives and YouTubers. They posted a highly edited and cobbled together video to Twitter that tries to blame YouTubers like The Quartering, Ryan Cannell, Geeks and Gamers, Drunk, 3PO, Robot Head, Bandit Incorporated, Nerd Rodic, Ethan Van Skyver, Mr. H Reviews, SC Reviews, World Class Bullshitters, Tim Pool, and others. It also targets Catholic Bishop Robert Barron, Daily Wire creator Ben Shapiro, OAN reporter Jack Vasobic, conservative commentator Dave Rubin, psychologist Jordan B. Peterson, and blogger Ichi Baca. Their tweet reads, aided by an analysis over 1 million tweets and 1,000 YouTube videos, this is the full story of alt-right radicalization in the Star Wars fandom. From designated white, white supremacist hate groups to YouTubers, this is how hate attacked the Star Wars sequel trilogy and won. Ironically, the video features a tweet from Jack Posobiec sharing a bounty in a comics article showing the exact opposite of what the video and tweet claims they do. It reveals that Disney is the one who is actually promoting the hatred and is in fact hiring hateful racist people like Christina Ariel. The Star Wars High Republic show host tweeted back in March 2020, white people effing stop it, your racism won't save you, your ignorance is not an excuse. Another tweet reads, just a reminder that white women are just as complicit in the upholding and enforcing white supremacy. Disney would endorse these Heinous tweets writing, our Star Wars community is one of hope and inclusivity. We do not stand for bullying and racism. We support Christina Ariel. Ariel isn't the only hateful person the company employs. Star Wars The High Republic writer Justina Ireland tweeted back in January, quote, I guess mediocre white men are still going to be on here bragging about their mediocrity as though it's a hilarious anecdote instead of pure assholery. So thanks for establishing that baseline early 2021. In February 2020, she wrote, I was today years old when I discovered there was an actual White Lives Matter movement and they apparently have promotional materials. The caucasity. White supremacy is like the devil. It doesn't need an advocate. On top of hiring these individuals and then supporting their racism, Kathleen Kennedy, Disney, and Lucasfilm proceeded to fire the Mandalorian actress Gina Carano via a press statement that lied about her. That statement read, Quote, Gina Carano is not currently employed by Lucasfilm and there are no plans for her to be in the future. Nevertheless, her social media posts denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are, ab are abhorrent and unacceptable. 
But post Corona was fired for did not denigrate anyone based on their cultural and religious identities. In fact, it warned of doing so and how if one does so, it can lead to horrific violence. Not only would they lie about Chrono in this press statement, but most recently Disney CEO Bob Chapek would double down on those lies at their annual investor meeting. The CEO is asked, quote, It's clear that there is a new blacklist punishing conservatives in the entertainment industry. Disney Plus actors Pedro Pascal and Gina Carano tweeted similar analogies of current political events to Yahtzee Germany. Yet only Carano, who is considered a conservative, was fired from The Mandalorian. Regarding Disney and a blacklist, this is the way? Chapik answered, I don't really see Disney as characterizing itself as left-leaning or right-leaning, yet instead standing for values, values that are universal, values of respect, values of decency, values of integrity, and values of inclusion. And we seek to have not only how we operate, but the content that we make reflective of the rich diversity of the world we live. And I think that's a world we all should live in, in harmony and peace. It's apparent he doesn't actually believe those words, given they lied about Carano and fired her via a press statement. That's not respect, de decency, integrity, or inclusion. So it comes as no surprise that Disney sycophants would lie about why Star Wars has been an utter disaster under Disney, Bob Chapek, Bob Iger, and Kathleen Kennedy. They are just following the example shown by Disney CEO Bob Chapek and Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy. They are lying. But within those lies, they actually expo expose the ugly truth about Star Wars. It's a company that hires and defends racists and lacks honest leadership. My name is John Trent, and you've been watching Bounding into Comics.